Creation Day 6 Beasts of the Earth At the start of Creation Day 6, God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth, each according to its kind, and it was so. The third category named in Genesis 1.24 is beasts. This category includes elephants, lions, tigers, giraffes, bears, wolves, coyotes, and other large and long-legged animals that would not fit the categories of cattle or creeping things. The beast of the earth would also include dinosaurs, which are discussed in our other videos. When you see an 18-foot-tall giraffe, you can't help but notice its amazing neck. Because of the giraffe's long neck, God designed the giraffe with one of the largest hearts in the animal world and nearly double the blood pressure of any other creature. When you consider the uphill distance the heart has to pump blood to reach the giraffe's head, you can see why such a powerful heart is needed. The giraffe's blood flow to the head is also controlled by a series of one-way check valves to hold back the blood from rushing to the brain when the giraffe lowers its head. These check valves in the giraffe's neck also prevent the blood from flowing away from the brain too quickly when it lifts its head again. You probably know that when you have been bending down low and then suddenly stand and lift your head, you can get a little dizzy. Now think of the giraffe. Can you imagine what would happen if these valves weren't there? The first time the giraffe bent down for a drink of water, that poor giraffe would literally blast his brains out from all that blood rushing down into his head. And the simple act of raising his head would result in such a loss of blood from the brain that the giraffe would pass out and crumple to the ground. But God designed the giraffe with these special features that only the giraffe needs because of his long neck. The man behind evolution, Charles Darwin, proposed one of his silliest ideas in his book, The Origin of Species. He imagined that the giraffe came into existence during a long drought when some pre-giraffe, hoofed creature was able to stretch his neck out to reach leaves that were higher up in the tree that others couldn't reach. These creatures with the stretched out necks then supposedly gave birth to offspring who inherited long necks from their parents, and thus Darwin concluded, By this process, long continued, an ordinary hoofed creature might be converted into a giraffe. Of course, sensible scientists know that such characteristics cannot be passed down to their offspring. For instance, if you lift weights and develop large arm muscles, your children will not be born with large arm muscles. Furthermore, there is no fossil evidence supporting the idea that some short-necked creatures slowly evolved into long-necked giraffes. Giraffes have always been giraffes, long necks and all, and they were designed that way by God from the beginning. Horses have been useful to mankind for thousands of years. They have been used for transportation, pulling wagons and carrying riders on their back. They have been used for farming, plowing fields, hauling loads, and have been essential in cattle ranching. Horses have been used in war, carrying soldiers and equipment into battle. And horses are used in sports, such as horse racing and rodeos. There are approximately 60 million horses in the world. Most are cared for by humans, but there are still many wild horses that live completely independent of man. Most evolutionists believe that millions of years ago, small three-toed horses lived and gradually evolved into the larger one-toed horse that we have today. This evolutionary horse series has been widely taught to the public. Biology teachers often display a very convincing-looking chart to demonstrate horse evolution to their classes. Even some Bible believers have been tricked into thinking that horses started out small and then evolved into something larger. But what are the facts? National Geographic of January 1981 described an excavation in Nebraska where the remains of thousands of animals were buried during a single volcanic eruption. The magazine photo shows a fossilized hoof of a one-toed horse along with one of a three-toed horse. Both horses were trapped in the same eruption. 
The caption under the photo proclaimed, An evolutionary moment is frozen in time. Millions of readers of National Geographic may have been impressed by this quote-unquote proof of evolution and not given the matter any further thought. But what does this evidence really show? One fact that is clearly illustrated by this photo is that three-toed and one-toed horses both existed at the same time. Both creatures had been killed in the same volcanic eruption. This hardly supports the idea that the smaller horse was the ancestor of the larger horse. So where did this misleading chart come from? The creatures shown in the chart are based on bones found in widely diverse locations, India, North America, South America, and Europe. They have been cleverly arranged in the chart with the small ones at the bottom and the large ones at the top to make it look like progressive evolution. The horse chart is a hoax. The reality is that modern horses come in a wide variety of sizes. The Falabella horse of Argentina is only 17 inches high when fully grown, and the massive Clydesdale horse grows to be six feet tall. Both varieties of horses are alive today, so clearly the larger horse has not evolved from the smaller, nor the smaller from the larger. Even more horse evidence was uncovered during an excavation in South America where many different varieties of horse skeletons were all found buried in one location. The problem was that the order was upside down. The modern large horse was found buried deeper than the more primitive three-toed horse, which was higher up in the rock strata. It's rock-hard evidence like this that leads many scientists to recognize the difficulty of accepting this evolutionary horse nonsense. Many people are waking up to the truth, including Dr. David Raup, curator of the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. He wrote, Classic cases, such as evolution of the horse, have had to be modified or discarded as a result of new, more detailed information. Charles Darwin even admitted, According to my theory of evolution, large numbers of transitional forms must have existed. Then why do we not find them in large quantities embedded in the crust of the earth? The number of intermediate species must have been inconceivably great, yet we find none. This perhaps is the most obvious and most serious objection to my theory of evolution. Many students have been tricked into believing that the fossil record proves evolution, but just the opposite is true. The fossil record proves that the theory of evolution is not true. The fossil record clearly supports exactly what the Bible tells us about creation. Genesis 1.25 repeats the familiar phrase that gives us God's own assessment of His creation, and God saw that it was good. God eliminates the possibility of anyone ever questioning whether natural selection or survival of the fittest played any part in His creation. There were no unfit animals. They were all very good, just as God designed them. Psalm 104, verse 24 tells us, O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom thou hast made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. With the creation of the beasts of the earth, the first part of Creation Day 6 is now complete. The earthly habitat that God made for the first man, Adam, has been finished. Earth was now a paradise. Everything was good, and everything was ready for the crowning feature of God's creation, a creature made in God's image. We'll talk about that in the next video. Thanks for watching the Bible Brick Channel. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe below. And check out our other videos. You can find links to all our videos on BibleBrick.com. That's Bible-Brick.com.